Hi there, this is Cyril Brand, and today I'm going to take the next 10 minutes to teach you how to write, how to structure and write your um, short ebook opt in or one of the long, epic 3,000 word blog posts. Like for those of you who don't do this every day and it seems like it's just like insurmountable. Okay, so first let me start by saying my kids are outside playing, so <laughs> you might hear them in the background. Don't be alarmed. I am a mom. I do work from home. Um, so let's get right into this. Okay, so the first, like the key to doing this and doing it well is really just to have a fantastic outline. And that means um, being able to, to have enough stuff in your, uh, enough like topics in your outline to break your topic down so that it's easy for you to write and easier for your reader to digest. So let me start with um, some content that I do for The Shelf. So I write for theshelf.com. Um, I'm also the editor of theketobowl.com. I um, have my own blogs and I write for like real estate companies and blah, blah, blah. blah. So for theshelf.com though, I do long posts, long form posts, 3000 words or more, lots of research. Um, my general rule is um, I do as much research as I do writing. So um, I do, if I'm writing 3,000 words, then I do 3,000 words of research. You know, it usually takes me about the same amount of time to do both. So, okay, let me show you how it gets done. So I start with an outline. For the, out, for the outline, I include the number of words that I intend to have in each section of the outline. So for instance, I recently did a post for uh, the shelf.com on back to school, um, the start of the, the shopping season. And it was a two-part post. 3,000 words in one post, 3,000 words in another post. This outline is for the second, uh, the part two of that, of the post. So it was, um, um, came in just under 3,000 words. I have a, a, the intro, which is 150 words, a recap of what we talked about in the previous post, 300 words, um, some statistics on Gen X moms, 1,200 words altogether, Gen Z kids, which is generally their kids, 1,200 words all together, and the conclusion of 200 words. So this is my outline. Very simple for Gen X moms. You want to talk about who they are, you know, like the demographic information, um, how they use social media, and how they shop. Because we're, again, we're talking about the the back, uh, holiday season spending. And for Gen Z, who they are, how they use social, and how they shop. The next step in this process is to actually do the research. And here is how my research generally looks. I have what I call a research file. I'll just name it whatever whatever the topic is about. At the top of the page, I have an H1 header that talks about, you know, like this basically tells me what the research is about. And then I have nothing but sources. Sources, um, I usually use sources that are, because I write on social media I, in technology stuff, uh, my sources are usually no more than three to four years old, depending on what kind of information I'm looking for. And I have the source, the article title. Sometimes I'll have the date and the resource for the actual um, the, the resource, the link to the resource that I actually use. I like to copy and paste direct quotes, like actual content, directly from my article into my research page. I don't I don't do any paraphrasing at this stage because I want to make sure that I have the information correct. The, the second point is um, when I copy and paste, the hyperlinks um, or the the sources that my source use come over too. So for instance, this article on Forbes actually links to another article on Forbes um, that I can use. So I'll do that. Um, or if this this article on Forbes, Forbes also links to um, what turned out to be a study conducted by um, babycenter.com. And then I was able to, to download that study and look, look through that and use that as a resource as well. So that is stage two. Stage one is doing your outline. Boom. Stage two is doing your research which looks like so. And again, like I said, um, I research as much as I, as much as I write. So this particular, um, um, this particular page of nothing but research is 3,200 words by itself. And the article that I'm writing is going to be 3,000 words or so. Um, I also include any charts or, or graphs that I see that are useful um, because I submit that with, with the writing to the shelf. And then um, depending, like the editor may decide that she wants to use it or she wants to recreate it or whatever the case may be. So so that I have everything that I need. I don't have to go back and try to find all the sources again. I have everything I need to write my article. So stage three of this, after creating my outline and creating my research, my research page of 3,000 words, this, this page is actually 22 pages, right? So after creating my, my, research, uh, my, my research page is to take my research and stick it inside my outline. So it ends up looking like this. So remember my outline looked like this, 
intro, recap, Gen X moms, Gen Z kids, conclusion, right? So Gen X moms, who they are, how they use social, how they shop. And then my actual research, uh, I'm sorry, my actual, what I call a pool file is when I put my research inside my outline. So for, for the research, I just go through and I look at, like I read every section and then I just copy and paste them into whatever part of the, the, um, the uh, outline they go into. So right here, boom. If this is about how they shop, I'll put it right here, put a bullet point. And there I am. I have my information about how they shop. So when I get ready to write the how they shop section, I already have all my bullet points lined up and it ends up looking like this. So I also copy and paste my graphs as well. Um, I make sure that I, I bring along with the graphs, the, the sources, so that we don't have to go back looking for like where did this information come from? I always keep all my sources together. Um, so let's see if we go to, for example, um, let's say we've copied and pasted all of our information from our um, from our research page into our graph, I'm sorry, into into our outline, we now have 3,056 words. It's 14 pages now. Oops, 14 pages. And let's say we want to view view this math thing. Let's say we want to go to Gen X moms uh, social media use. So any any one of these sources that I click on ideally should be about how Gen X moms use social media. So I'm clicking on this source. Let's see what I read here. Adults ages, um, adults 35 to 49 were found to spend an average of six hours, 58 minutes a week on social media networks. That's perfect. Um, so again, this should be about Gen X moms and how they use social media. So uh, Sprout Social surveyed 1,000 millennials, Gen Xers, and baby boomers. The results revealed a few commonalities to shed light on the difference between them. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is Sprout Social. I'll probably link back to that and see what it is. Um, oh, there it is how they follow brands, same thing with Gen Z. And again, this is this is my pool file. This is where I've combined my outline with the research that I did so that the research is organized into the outline before I start writing. So if I go to Gen Z, who they are, this should tell me something about Gen Z, who they are, let's see. Compared to any generation that has come before, Gen Z is less trusting of brands, I'm right here. As Emerson, they have the strongest bullshit filter because they've grown up in an era where information was available at all times, which is very true. I have a Gen Z or in my household. Gen Z is more willing to hear a brand story. Okay, good. So how they shop. Let's see. Gen Z, how they shop. Teens are spending most of their money on food over the last several years. Blah, blah, blah. Food now accounts for 2.4% of spending. Great. So I have my outline. I, mean, I have my research put inside my outline. So now all that's left to do is do the writing. So basically, when you do the when you do it this way, when you do the writing, all you're doing is connecting the dots. Now I want you to notice something. Um, my my headings are the same as they were in my original outline. Okay, you got your intro, the recap, Gen X moms, who they are, how they use social, how they shop. Same thing in the actual work, Gen X moms, how who they are, how they use social, social, how they shop. And it will read like this. So like millennials, most Gen X moms work outside the home. 75% of Gen Xers earn more than boomers did at their age. Now, if you notice, I keep my hyperlinks intact because I want to be able to add, provide the value to the readers where they can go back and check my sources and find out more information for themselves. As well, when I submit content to theshelf.com, I submit the graphs as well. If I, if I think a graph was useful, um, it's going to be useful to um, readers for theshelf.com, I submit the graph, and then they can recreate it on their end. So it ends up looking like, can I find it? It ends up looking like this. So this is one of the other posts that I did for the shelf, how to keep your brand FTC compliant in your first influencer marketing campaign. This is 3,000 words. So I keep the, I, the, I keep the graphs intact just in case they want to use them. Let me see if there's one in here that they've recreated. This is where I talked about New Girl. These days, my favorite TV shows are Daily V, broadcast daily on YouTube from Gary um, Vaynerchuk's channel, and New Girl, which I watch exclusively on Netflix before bed. I do love New Girl. Nick Miller time. So this right here would have come from, would have come from a, um, a graph that I actually sent them that they recreated. For, the, for their readers, I have some screenshots of some social media copied and pasted into there. And this is a crushing, like an awesome 3,000 word post. Got uh, Richard Sherman there. That dude is awesome. Boom. And that's how it gets done. It's, I mean, it literally took me a day, like one day. So if you're thinking about writing an ebook and you don't think you have time, it's going to take too long, it, eight hours. If you do it this way, I'm telling you, it'll take six to nine hours tops. You'll have all your resources. It'll be credible. It'll be great. It'll be fantastic. 
and it'll be done, most important of all. So I'm Sir Robert. I hope that helped you and crush it. Boom.